Yo, yo, what up, man? Trade the truth, aka King True Motion Man. If you don't know Stuck in Motion, now for now. I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. Let's get it. Yes, sir. We right back at it, y'all. We got a legend coming at y'all. We got Trey the Truth jumping off the porch today. What's up, bro? What up, my guy? You all right? Man, feeling great, man. How you feeling, bro? Uh, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, man. That's what's up, man. Yo, let me let me start the interview by asking you, man, how's your mental health these days, bro? Uh, I believe I believe strong. Shit, I'm still going, you know? Yeah. But that's, that's a, a first. Somebody asked, but, you know, I feel I'm cool, bro. That's what's up, man. Nah, for sure, man. You know, I, I mean, bro, like, as men, we don't ask each other that as much. You know what I'm saying? As black men, I don't think, like, shit, we even as comfortable asking each other things like that. But, you know, that's something important, like, because it's easy to just say, hey, what's up? Oh, yeah, what up? I'm cool. But to ask somebody for real, like, how you feel? Like, how yo, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I so, respect that, for yeah. sure. Nah, that's what's up, man. So, yeah, bro, I mean, man, Trey, I mean, you a legend, you know, like our our audience, you know, like we know who you are, but like definitely want to, you know, tap into like your story and like, you know, really like where you come from and like what, you know, built you to be like who you are today. You know what I mean? I mean, born and raised, um, I'm a product of Houston, Texas to the end. Um, I don't necessarily know if something built me to be who I am other than life itself, you know what I'm saying, which molded me in the, from experiences, from the hiccups, the, the, the roadblocks, the goods, the bads, you know, it, it developed character for sure, but um, I, I believe I've always been me, you know what I'm saying, just always had the heart, always been laid back, cool, always embraced everybody, like that's always been my character. Um, but definitely, I think the only other thing that defined me is the bads and the goods that I went through. It just it just helped right. bring out the character. You know, sometimes you have stuff in you, and it just got to be triggered to get woke up. Yeah, no, for yeah. sure. I mean, I, I mean, I think a lot of times, like us being in those positions where you you wouldn't expect to have been in a position but then something happened and then you had to like maybe think like right there on the fly yeah. and a lot of times that's what make us like who we are you know what yeah. i mean that's what build like character for us yeah yeah you're right and that's exactly what i was saying man but definitely sometimes you don't have time to think or plan you got to get to it right then and there. nah real spill um and so you from uh you from the south side of houston yeah yeah southwest okay word yeah but you, I, i've lived all around houston often so you know that's why i'm embraced everywhere okay word and can you tell us you know like what type of cat you was you know coming up in houston you know what was you into um <laughs> a little everything you know you had your points where you trying to be the fly little nigga with all the girls <laughs> Um, you know, my brother, uh, a known street legend out there, um, definitely, even with that, right, I did everything I could to not necessarily be in the shadow. You know, I wanted to make my own name, which I did, mm -hmm. and it, it worked out for the best, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh, other than that, that's it, man. I always ran the streets. I always had a, a bunch of my family, a bunch of my guys with me. And, we would do everything we can, you know what I'm saying? Whether it was trying to hustle, whether it got to the point when I finally first started trying to rap to a little bit of everything, man. I just lived life, you know, typical kid from the city. Yeah. Was you in the sports when you was younger or was you more gravitated I into like being outside and being in the streets? I, I, I ain't really get into sport. I ain't get into sport because I'm the type of person I always do my own thing. Yeah. And I think the first couple of times, <laughs> Being a football, and how them coaches are yelling like, "Hey, bro, you ain't gonna be talking to me like I'm crazy, man." <laughs> so that shit didn't last long. But yeah. um, other than that, you know, I just I was in a little bit of everything, bro. Yeah, word. Yeah, nah, yeah, I can yeah, dig yeah, it, man. Yeah. And now, did, did you did you have like both parents? You know what I'm saying? Like in the yeah, crib? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not in the crib, but yeah, okay. I had both. You know, okay, my word. mom and then my pop. So. Both of them silent, both of them very supportive. Um, been there. And you know, the, the the good thing with that is I still, at a young age, decided to get out there on my own. And they kind of, you know, they respected it and just 
let me do me. Yeah. And um, you know, it come back full circle because everything I jumped off that porch to go do on my own paid off to where we are now. Word, word. And when would you say, like, at what age would you say you jumped off the porch? Oh man, I was moving. I was moving around, migrating everywhere from, from a young age, man. Whether it was staying at Amy's houses, partners' houses, just I always did everything. Man. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And I heard you mention your big brother. Like, were were you the youngest? Are you the youngest? Nah, I'm middle. Oh, okay. Well, from my mom, from my mom, yeah. six, and I'm the middle. Okay. Yeah. Well, my older brother Dinky, my little brother Jayton. Oh, okay, word. Yeah, yeah. Nah, shout out J-Town. Always, like, shit, hearing you shout him out and, and rap and yeah. hearing him, you know what I'm saying, over the years and shit, so. Nah, you know, that's my little brother, man. Yeah. yeah. Nah, I could dig that. I could dig that. So, like, when did you, like, when did you fall in love, like, with hip-hop and with the culture? Like, who was you listening to coming up, bro? What was inspiring you? I always loved music in general. Um, in Houston, it used to be a place called Sam Goody in a place called Sound Waves. Oh, yeah. um, my old man was a diehard gangster rap. Every week, I believe it was every Friday, I believe. Back then, it was either Tuesday or Friday. It was Tuesday, yeah, yeah. when I was used to come out. So, but he would go on Fridays, either Friday or Saturday morning. Yeah. We would roll with him, he would go get every new album that was coming out from the pox, the cubes, to to anything you could think of. Yeah. And we just rolling with him. I remember he was in a little blue Toyota. It had a little music in it. We just roll, listen to gangsta shit all day. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I've always loved music, you know, from now, you know, he he loved R and B. My mom used to actually sing for real, for real. Okay, wow. So um it's crazy because back then they don't really have as much footage, so I still be trying to get a hold of that. You know, my mom used to be on TV and everything. She was part of wow. a group. Um, I forget the name of it. I had to call an asshole. But um, the combination of her and the soul and the, the R&B side and him with, of course, the R&B and all the gangster rap music just was naturally something that I love. Word, word. Nah, yeah. I can dig it. I mean, and shit, even like the, in the West Coast music, I mean, with you know what I'm saying, like shit, Nate Dog, yeah, Warren G, I'm talking about even back G before them, Spice and, Ones, everybody. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can go down, I can go all through that lane. Yeah, man. yeah. And who's you bumping back then? Like all of them, man. I, I, a little bit of all of them, man. Like it was so crazy. We, I remember even going back to when he used to have from out of Florida. He used to have DJ Magic Mike. Oh yeah. Feel the beat and all that just yeah. for the trunk like bro like I used to be a, a real music head. Word. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. Never would have thought I'd be one of the one of them ones to huh. this day, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, and what made you like jump into shit rapping yourself? Cuz I mean, Houston a city where I mean, cats is known for cats to be freestyling and yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like that the, was always the wave. Like We got some of the greatest freestylers ever, you know especially from coming up in that era. Yeah. But um, started rapping, my brother w was fighting the trial for his first life sentence, his capital murder. And um, just dealing with, with life within itself, you know, from dealing with anytime we come out, cameras all around, all kind of different stuff, you know, it was a real big case. Mm -hmm. um, and him calling home from jail, every once in a while he may kick a rapper here send letter songs with his raps on them and I used to just learn them. You know, I yeah. learn them and try and rap them back to him for him, you know, just looking up to your older brother and yeah. uh, going about it and doing that led to me doing my own first tape. I mean, my own first song. Mm -hmm. And it turned out it was on a, man, it was either at Sharpstown or the guy, it might've been a Galleria. And it was a karaoke. It was the gallery. I think it was a karaoke place mm. where you can go in there. You pick a beat and you <laughs> rap to it, Word. and they record you. Yeah. And um, that's why I did my first demo. That's hard. But What's being good? as young as I was, shit. All the older niggas throughout the the hood, like man, that little nigga can go. You know what I'm saying? For me, yeah. 
for them, it's just a, knowing a, a kid can rap is, was dope within the self. But then, you know, I was doing my thing. And um, me, myself, I felt that shit was garbage. <laughs> like, if I was, if, if, if I was ever able to find that shit, I'd probably laugh myself under the goddamn desk laughing. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> but um, anything I do, I'm committed to. And if I'm committed, I go all the way to the end. Yeah. Started off horrible which led to where I am now. And I'm definitely one of the ones that ain't to be fucked with. Come on now, and, and you gotta put in them reps, you know what I'm saying? To, wh whether it's in sports, whether it's in whatever you do, you know what I mean, to, to, to per perfect yourself, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah. Now let me ask you this, bro, because you got like one of the most distinct voices in rap. People say that a lot. <laughs> Did you always have like such a deep voice, a distinct voice like this? I believe so, because if I was to call my son right now, my youngest son, yeah. his shit just as deep as mine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, really all my kids, all their voices deep. My little girl, not as much, but you know, right. they all got their voice, man. Word, word. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny, man. Nah, like, one, was wondering like if that was something where when you was coming up, like you kind of like made that your rap voice or something and then it kind of mm -hmm. stuck or if You it know the crazy thing, man, when people hear me, shout out to the homie, um, Jack Funny, oh, right. you yeah. know, we had just did that skit where he was talking about my voice, but that's how people really be. When they meet me, you know, they'll, they'll see me and be like, oh shit, that's Trey. But then when they hear me talk, the first thing they always say, oh shit, that's his real voice for real. <laughs> right, for real. So, you know, it yeah. is what it is, man. Nah, that's funny, man. So, man, speaking of the skits, man, I saw this crazy ass skit um, with uh, White Dolomite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, he done been here on the porch. He 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 are yeah. here our fam. But yeah, uh, shout out White Dolomite, man. Yeah, man. So, uh, but you know, I was just it, 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 that was an interesting, interesting time and an interesting day. <laughs> but you know, we built we built from that, and um, you know, I always be telling them, man, like it's just ways to go about it, man. You know, because yeah. shit can definitely go different ways at any given time. Nah, for real. And even. But that's all part of growth, right? Like, if you pay attention closely when you hear T.I. say, think about it, think about it, <laughs> he really, he was dead serious. Like, right. any action I do, I got to be held accountable for. So we at a point in life now where it's, we work hard to not react. We work hard to not make the wrong moves, you know, because sometimes, sometimes little hiccups can cost you, you yeah. know? Nah, so, that's real. Yeah, yeah. And bro really looked like he a white cat, so. Yeah, people don't know that. He's not white at all. Right, nah. People yeah. don't even know he used to rap. Yeah, you nah, You see what I'm saying? It's sure, a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, they need to do their research on him. But yeah, yeah, I, I, get, I, get, I get what he doing, like I told him. You know, because sometimes you never know how people can react. Um, you never know who having a bad day. Yeah. You know, because even with me, right, like if I'm really dealing with some shit, from life to, to anything, and I'm just going through it. Nine to my 10, whoever is that person to really trigger that's gonna get all the backlash or everything I'm feeling at that moment. Yeah. You know, so I always tell people, man, be cautious because you never really know. And sometimes in a lot of situations, going viral ain't the moment. At, right. at the moment, ain't it. Because right. you're still jeopardizing everything. You know, just like me, you're talking off camera. Yeah. Sometimes, you have to understand, man, that moment for that attention don't be worth it. Yeah, nah, you know? that's real. Oh, it might be good for right then and there, but shit, when that shit wither away, it's like, I can't, I can't go back. I can't come back from it, you know? Right, yeah. So how'd you get to the point to where you could, you know, have situations come your way and you not react to them or I, not? I, I'm still growing. As much as people know me as the big homie and OG, I'm still growing. Yeah because I'm human, you know? Different shit can trigger different shit all the time, right? But hearing a lot of, a lot of people, used to hear a lot of people say back in the gap, um, everything don't deserve a reaction. Right. And be the bigger person, or you got so much to lose. We used to hear that shit and then give a fuck about him. Like, <laughs> right, I'm right. not hearing that at that moment, you know? But then when you do get older and you really do got a lot to lose, 
and you got a lot of shit going on, you have to start thinking like that because it could take you a lifetime to build something up. It could take you one second to lose everything. Yeah, that's real. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So even now I'm still growing, which led to my album, you know, my album that I just put out Stuck in Motion, right? Yeah. Even with everything I'm going through, I did not, I made it my business to not put nothing negative, no no type of anger. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to be good music, yeah. unbothered, unapologetic, you know, that, that hustling music, the motivate, just showing them, nigga, I'm having emotion. Yeah. We having it right now, nigga. It ain't nothing for me really to be mad about yeah. what I'm complaining for. Yeah, not I'm having really. it my way, you know? Yeah. And, um, that was the purpose of doing that. So that's even a form of growth, even within the music itself, you know what I'm saying? Word, yeah. When I, when I bumped into you last night, I was telling you, like, man, that album, like, it's just, it's just so smooth, you know what I'm saying? Like, just one to for real, just ride to. It's just a smooth, just a. a you got to think it's been, it ain't, we ain't really had that vibe and era of music mm -hmm. and you know because that's what originally we started from in texas and then as time went by you don't really have it i think only a few people who still kept to it would be like the the currencies you know what i'm saying yeah. uh you got larry june doing this thing right so right. it's like um jay word you got different people who still just get into that that cruising music vibe yeah. you know what i'm saying um sure. Mr. Rogers, so it's like when you have people getting to that point of just a cruising music, it's it's so much of a vibe. All fans, all walks of life can appreciate it and and mess with it, you know. Yeah. Because if you got to think, cruising music is also get high music for some people. Right. For sure. Uh, sip music to whatever they want to do, so it yeah. all go hand in hand. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, for sure. Shout out uh, Ellie Dollar, another uh, cat with the oh, yeah, yeah. music, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you line. know, that's all still tied into Mr. Rogers, yeah. too. Yeah, so, no, nah, absolutely. And the production on the project is, is, is smooth. I mean, just the just the whole... Yeah, I went, and got, I went and got, um, of course, Mr. Rogers. Um, he did, I believe, four or five on that. He executive produced it. Um, Dallas Shook, um, Black Metaphor did one on there. Okay. Mr. Lee, shout out my bro, Mr. Lee. Oh, yeah, Mr. Izzy Lee, the, the producer, um, Young Baller. Um, then on the Deluxe, you know, we still got Moxie and, and a couple of other ones, man. I'm trying to make sure I ain't forget nobody, but all of them raw at what they do, man. Yeah. And, you know, I, I felt like with this, with me knowing a bunch of tension was gonna be placed on me just coming back into the game how I am, which I never really left, but I'm saying just really coming back full fledged. I wanted to shed light and shed on, on, on my people too, you know? Yeah, no, nah, for sure. All right, and then can you talk about like the, the meaning of stuck in motion? You yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? Because it's a now, lot You know, the, the, the crazy thing, I would have I would have thought everybody would have got that off the rip, you know what, <laughs> what I'm saying? But every interview I've done in the last two weeks, people ask me that, and it's yeah. like, for me, going through life itself, mm -hmm. going through pain, stress, struggle, hardship, roadblocks, anger, just every emotion, everything wrapped up in life. Um, for me, no matter how many failures or losses I take, I have to keep pushing forward. And with that being said, stuck in motion means stopping ain't an option. Mm -hmm. In any situation, whether it be big strides, a slow cruise, fast pace, Anything going on, I cannot stop. I'm forever gonna be stuck moving, mm. which is a good thing. I gotta keep pushing forward, so I'm stuck in motion. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm gonna forever be moving. It's not like it ain't no stopping. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, I wasn't sure because like one interpretation I would take from it, like being stuck in motion, is like almost like somebody going through the motions, or like being, you know, that 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 hamster on the wheel. You know what I'm saying? Where like you in motion but not going anywhere, so, mm -hmm. you, you know. You, you can look at that, but yeah, now nah, for me, it's stopping in the option. Right. Whether you go left, right, front, back, it's just stopping in the option, keep it moving. Yeah, nah, I can dig it. And you had, like, like really not too many features on the project, No too. features, really, just um, Larry June, which, you know, we had a project, a song on his project, so. Yeah. People love the, the chemistry, so it was only right. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. T.I., that's my brother, so, you know, it was only right to have him. And then my nephew, Nico, you know, he real, 
he had a younger generation, but he be he'll turn me up a lot, you know. And yeah, for me it's dope because even with him, any music that I do, I make him come sit in there when it's done to give me his opinion, you know. And it's like iron sharpen iron. He had a younger generation, so he think of a young nigga standpoint. He, yeah. oh yeah, they gonna take to this. I don't know. This might be too over their head or this, you know. Yeah. And we balance off each other. So when we do, we do. We got a lot of songs. That really, every song me and him that came out with and been hits off the rip. So right. they come and I'm pretty sure he'll work on his project. You know, my son Jared, a, a little younger than him, he even dope within itself, you know, like our whole family is music, you know, Jayton, right. yeah. my cousin Boss, um, all of us, my cousin Dougie, like all of us always been dope at, at music. Right, right. So yeah. No, nah, that's dope. And um, but you was mentioning earlier, like talking about, you know, your mom's like being a singer and I was going to tap into, you know, like just the fact that I feel like artists like Devin the Dude, artists like yourself mm -hmm. are like artists that, you know, even before was super popular. Yeah, melodic, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah man, definitely. to be melodic and-, and So all, man, music. in Houston, we was, with our group, Gorilla Mall was, damn near just a younger generation of a bone thug. Hmm. We can rap fast, we can harmonize, we can do a little bit of any and everything. That's what made us unique. Yeah. And, uh, I'll never forget, man, when we first started, a lot of people didn't necessarily take to us, you know, because, it was, man, they, we rapped too fast and singing and everything else. But yeah. now look at the world. You see what I'm saying? Right, right. Yeah. That's, the whole, that's the whole vibe of it. Yeah, man. And I always tell people, right, like when younger artists come holler at me and what I should do and this and that, I always tell them, man, be you. Because what happens is, you can stop doing you trying to fit in with everybody else and you got to realize this shit moves constantly yeah so what if you left your post of what you had that was going to be a for sure win for you to come trying to fit in here but now as soon as you get here and shift it to yours ain't nobody at that post so somebody else gonna get it or you really just lost everything that you was working and building up to right right yeah that, that's when people like trying to yeah you trying to like, get, like press that button to get it quick, trying to get that, yeah, that, yeah. that win. Like you gotta fast. be patient, man. Like, yeah, skip them steps. I always take the long road around, but yeah. it's the longevity. I've been in the game over 20 years, bro. You know how hard it is for people to say that? And to be in the game and still be respected. Right, respected, easy, relevant. Bro. Yeah. Absolutely. Still got over 2,000 unreleased records. Huh. Records all the way that date back to 08. And still, time is music. Yeah, you know. How do you stay relevant all these years? How do you stay motivated? You know, through all these years to keep going. I don't smoke and drink. My my vice is music. Mm. That's how I vent. Mm. So I'm always gonna be motivated just by my vibes. But at the same time, um, that's something I love to do. Is three things that keep me going. My music, my kids, mm. and being that I help the people. Right. Those three things I'm up. And believe it or not, still I still can get nervous at times, but those three things is once I'm on it, it's just like once the kid learned how to ride a bike. Every time you put that bike in front of him, even if he ain't rode it for decades, once he get on it and get going, yeah. it falls right back in the place of what you know how to do best. Right, right. And you dedicated your life, um, you know, of being like, uh, you know, a person of service. You know what I'm saying? Like really being out there, like, you know, working in the community. I know you got angels by nature. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you were like a really integral part of helping out like victims of Hurricane Harvey, you know, mm -hmm. in Houston back some years ago, um, even recently, like in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. um, can you just talk about like what, you know, even motivated you to, you know, even start working in the community and, and doing that. Like, why is that? Why was that important to you? I don't even think it was necessarily working in the community because I help everybody. Yeah. And sometimes people that ain't in the community, you know. Right. But I think honestly, just if you there, are you around and you know people in need, 
And you know shit can be really fucked up for them. And it don't take but a second to try and assist. Yeah. Because what if that was your mother and you wasn't around? That's you know? Right. Like I get so many niggas that come to me, right? They're, they may have been locked up, whatever it may be. They'll come here and they like, man, my mama didn't have nobody, mm. you know? And when them situations happen, bro, you actually were one of the few people who went to help them. Mm. Stuff like that go a, a, a long way. Because if, imagine if it was me going somewhere and I need somebody to look out for my tea, I would, I would hope they would, you know? Right. So that's why I do the things that I do. And at the same time, sometimes people can give up and call it quits because they feel like they don't have nobody. Mm. And you know, shit can get crucial. So in some of the moments that I pop up and, and I'm there to assist them, I'm giving them the drive to keep going mm. instead of giving up or instead of them crashing out. Yeah. Man, it seems like you've worked just as hard, if not harder, you know, within this field of philanthropy, activism, a activism, you know what I'm saying? Like just the work that you've done, you know, like I said, within the community, just to, like work for the people. It seems like you've worked just as hard in that realm as you have like within your career. So I, I'll tell you at the beginning of the conversation, once I'm committed to something, I'm all in. It don't matter what it is. See what I'm saying? Like when I'm doing rescues, whether it may be cutting trees, and I don't know how to do that shit. I ain't, that's never been me. Yeah. But once I start and I'm committed, I'm going to get it done. Yeah. I'm going to figure that shit out and I'm going to be the best of what I can. So yeah. whether it be from the people, the music, to fatherhood, to anything, I'm going, once I'm at that and that's where I'm at, I'm going to the end to be the best that I can. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, the, that's the whole goal for me. No, nah, for sure. Can you speak to the importance of like doing this work like past the hashtag? You know what I'm saying? What like you mean? because like oh, it's I, easy because it, because it's easy to when you it's know, a moment. It's easy when it's a moment to yeah, do the work. I, no, but I, then I see stuff where you doing work all the time. You know whether it's helping families whose houses are about but, who about to lose their houses. But it know, ain't even know. just that, right? Like I have a real. Again, once I commit, I commit. So. Even when all the attention cameras gone, people still need help and they still going through it. So yeah. I stay, I stay committed to it. You know, like I'm not helping and then disappear. I'm gonna be there. Yeah. Even when everybody else gone, I'm still gonna be there. Whether it may be me pulling up, popping up, checking on you, assisting however I can, I'm just always gonna be there. That's what makes me me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes they need that. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, even when you see people pass away, right? Everybody may follow the hype and oh, I'm here if you need me, whatever need is such and such. And after them days go by, them phone calls stop coming. Mm -hmm. Them reach outs stop coming. The assistance stop coming. And them, you know, people be feeling like, damn, it's just them against the world. Yeah. And I always want to do my best to let them know, hey, even if you talk to me every day or not, if something needed, I'm here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Nah, that's what's up, man. Nah, I mean, that, that's super important, and especially, you know, like, for somebody, for somebody in your position to, like, have, like, the empathy to, you know, be willing to help, like, individuals out. Like I said, I saw something on Twitter, man, where this uh, guy was talking about how, like, he was about to lose his house, I think the government, or, like, some people were trying to, like, take his house from him and all that, and you was you know, helping him, you know, to yeah. be able to like keep his house and like, you know, stuff like that. I mean, like, it's easy to like, you know, make your bread and you know what I mean? Be able to live you, your you, you way. You know what's crazy, bro? I never make a dollar from that shit. Mm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't make money from that, you mm. know what I'm saying? And like, I, I don't even believe in taking gas money for that type shit, mm. you know? And it's like, God continue to bless me in other ways. Yeah. So it balances itself out, you know? And and I feel like, on another note, it's like, some of them, if I didn't do some of the things I, I do, some of these people could be dead right now. Hmm. Some of that shit be real crucial yeah. at that moment. So why do I need to sit and plan for a week? They ain't eating for a whole week. Right. They ain't got lights. They don't know how they gonna even breathe the next hour. Right, right. So sometimes you gotta get straight to it. Yeah. All right, cool. So yeah, so so even outside of like all the relief work and everything we've been talking about, I mean, like you've had Trey Day, you know, going 15 on. Fifteen years. Yeah, man. It's a blessing. 
and like you've been deemed as the hometown hero. Mm -hmm. And what is it? Uh, July twenty second is twenty second, twenty third, and twenty fourth is trade day. But um, December I got special needs day. February I got relief gang day. Mm. March I have bump box day. Um, I got a lot of holidays. I got a day. In, <laughs> I got a trade day in Milwaukee. Okay, um, That's it's it's a it's a lot of it means a lot. Yeah. Man, we gotta go do something in Milwaukee, man. That's that's where I'm from. So. Oh, for real? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, man, I, I put a lot of people in position in Milwaukee. Word. Yeah. Nah, that's what's up, man. Yeah. Nah, we gotta. Uh, I, I really. I wanna... just left Milwaukee. I was out there, my my guy Philly Flyboy. Philly okay. Flyboy is one of the biggest video yeah, directors. Yeah, nah, for sure. Philly started with me. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Um, nah, shout out Philly, man. We gonna get him on the porch too. Oh yeah, yeah. I make sure we make that happen. You got Philly out there, Corey. You got man, you got so many different people I didn't put in position in a lot of ways out there, man. Yeah. And me putting them in position also brought money back to that community, brought money back to that city. Yeah. You know, when people was overlooking them, man. So that's yeah. a blessing too. Nah, that's what's up, man. Yeah, I took David Banner there to the, uh, they had the uh, opening of the Black Holocaust Museum oh, yeah. uh, up there. And uh, yeah, I had Banner come up there. I've never been there, I'm gonna have to go see that. Yeah. Hey, yeah, Banner, my brother, man. Yeah, um, nah, nah, good dude. He's another person, the way you asked me that question at the beginning. Yeah. He's heavy on that with me. So. Oh yeah, nah. But that's my brother though, you know, we yeah. ain't thinking interviews and music but yeah he hit right. me on that nah, for sure for he, the, had, he, he convinced me for the he, he actually fully convinced me to where i'm gonna actually go to a therapist you know what i'm saying for okay. the first time that's what's up bro yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so shout out Bella. yeah no nah, that's what's up man i've been i've been doing therapy for like nine months now man i had no I, me i was like i ain't gonna see no therapist i ain't crazy right but he he helped me look at it in a different aspect yeah nah because a lot of times a lot of us that, that that come up in these cities and the hoods and everywhere else, we have different type of trauma that we deal with. Yeah. Some of us hold it in, some of us lash out aggressively because that's our form of, you know, it's just, it's all a, a form of something that we keep balled up. So sometimes he helped me understand it's just good at some point to let it out, but instead of letting it out in a physical aggressive way, just let it out. And it might make you feel a lot different or better. Nah, that's right. And I'm always up for a challenge, so yeah. I'm with it. Nah, that's what's up, bro. Nah, that, that's ill, and that's that's huge for you to take a step like that and to even be willing to talk about it out loud. You know what I'm saying, bro? I've yeah, always been me. I don't okay. give a fuck what nobody think. That's what that's what make people appreciate me for me. Like I'm yeah. not, I don't care to fit in, man. I stood on my own many a day. Yeah. M more by myself than with others, you know. So. Yeah. I, I'm cool with that, man. I don't give a fuck how people feel, how they feel in my business. Yeah. You know? I mean, you've been like a true testament of uh, show respect, receive respect. And it always works that way. Yeah. And if they don't, fuck them. Yeah. And that's where the asshole by nature come in. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely where it comes in. Yeah. But you know the People don't even understand that the term for that asshole by nature is everybody has that in them, right? For sure. It just have to be triggered. Yeah. If you disrespect somebody, it's in their nature to jump in defense mode or be disrespectful back. Right, right. So yeah, I can. It's in my nature. I can be that if that's where you take me to. For sure. And the person that's like setting boundaries, the person that's you know willing to say no and don't have an issue with it, that and, and the person that's willing to tell the truth, you know what I'm saying, without holding it back, that's usually the person that's deemed as being the asshole. You know, and what I mean? always you never. I tell people, man, me being the way that I am, it, it wasn't written for me to be accepted. If anything, it was written for me to probably be the most hated and mm. most wished upon for me to fail, you know, yeah. but it come with the territory, bro. Why? Why? That's just how this shit go. Yeah. So, man, like, we was talking also before the interview, man, I was telling you, like, w I met you back, you <laughs> know, like, 2006, the Source magazine, like Great Day in Houston, photo shoot, uh, Everything cover Everything coming back around full circle, who the new? Man, crazy. You, you probably know? should show them that. You got, you, you want to you hold up the camera to show them? You said, oh man. Yeah. Uh, it nah, might as well, it ain't going to hurt you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, nah he, yeah. Right there. 
Yeah, that's 2006 right there. That's history. Classic history, you know what I'm saying? So, hold on, and, hold, keep it focused. He's gonna show you one more page. And, and, and then the interesting, and then the, and then the interesting thing in there is, so we got, we got this picture. Me, Jayton, and Boss doing uh, the Pepsi Yahoo Pepsi Smash, and, and you look boy, in the back corner. And your boy Spitty in the back corner doing what I do <laughs> on that phone, doing my digital thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm in that bitch with a 7X T-shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, the baggy clothes era was crazy, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in that bitch with a, a 7X on. Dog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and some Staplo jeans. I ain't give a damn. <laughs> But, but that yeah. was the, them was the days I had my signature Lokes. Yeah. Uh, you know, I made it to where everybody was rocking Lokes. That's what that was. Yeah. And speaking of that, it's so crazy. My people on their way, I'm going to bless your game. Right. My new glasses, um, I just did a partnership with Habibi. Okay. And it's Habibi glasses slash ABN. So my new actual shades going to release any day. Oh, that's hard. So I'm actually going to give you a pair early. You know? Okay. Word, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, for sure, for sure. Nah, that, that's what's up, man. And, and you see, IG let uh, tell Hayward to let you know when he pull up so I can grab one of them for him. All right. And then, so, and, and, and so you, I mean, being, being a natural born hustler, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you, you, you stay with, you know what I'm saying, the different businesses and all yeah. that. Can my biggest also, is Bump Box. Yeah, I was just about to ask that's you my, to talk that's about my Bump biggest, Box. And, my biggest business, shout out yeah. to all my partners there. Um, I just seen the cassette speaker that y'all yeah, dropped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you one. Word, if you, yeah, if you yeah, give yeah, me a logo or the ports, I, I have your special one done. All right, but. Um, but, you know, my partners, this, um, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I get you a porch and keep it on the porch in the back. Um, it's five of us that own the company, man. And we we built the company from man when it started, bro. It was just we was just happy, you know what I'm saying? It was something yeah. dope. Um, my brother Rob had he was randomly in China drunk and wanted to try some shit and he tried it and um they were up and running probably four or five months and when i came in i just started helping them you know i helped them with no intent on getting nothing from it i was just helping them to well i blew the company up with them in months time yeah. to where it was like at the end they would present me with a a big amount of money and also like well you know what man we actually feel like we need to give you part ownership of this and yeah. we grew and grew and grew to where now you know we got license deals with ufc um, you know we did the selena box the yeah. biggie box um dmx box um snoop cookies all the colleges um you see the nfl coming out to them we were in the barbie movie um, we own any cornhole, you know what a cornhole is? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. any cornhole that have a speaker on it, Okay. we got the rights to that. Um, we play cornhole around here. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to get you one with the, it comes with bump boxes. Okay, word. We own the rights to that. We got the shaker cups for the people who work out. We got the pages. You remember the old beepers? Yeah, yeah. We own the rights to that now. Oh, so, wow. You know what I'm saying? We got a, a lot with that. But the new one is the remix, which looks like the cassette tape. Yeah. And um, that one taking off massively yeah that's what i've been i've been saying that a lot like, like yeah because you know I, i'm 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 stamping it right now so even though they can get all the other ones that's the one i want people with right now and they loving it yeah because it's a nice size and they're able to move around with it yeah and it's perfect i mean for the time and like you know what i'm saying like that is true you know what i may do i may need to just do one specifically for that yeah no nah, for sure yeah. and how you feel about um just the thought of you know, like, I mean, being in the game as long as you've been in it, but then also, like, you know, this culture that we that, that we love, you know what I'm saying, is it, celebrating this 50th year and, yeah, and, and still moving and still progressing. It, it's dope. It's dope. I just wish, like, damn, we had to wait 50 years to, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So we got to wait another 50? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> We don't even know who the fuck going to still be around at that moment. <laughs> hey. But, um... And let's get a hip hop hall of fame. Like we just Right, because you know, like I tell people one of my close one of my close people is Cool Hurt. Okay, you well, know? yeah. That's the father of hip hop. So it's like how do people 
a lot of this generation don't know that. Yeah. That's stuff that we need to really teach and give credit, you know, because true, a lot of older ones who came before us, people look at them to be bitter, mm -hmm. but I don't necessarily look at them to be bitter. I look at them to be frustrated because they, they, they've helped them birth in this and build in it. And people ain't take the time even to let me salute you or let me just shake your hand. You right. know, they walk past them like they nothing, which don't nobody owe nobody shit, but it's just like, it's out of common courtesy respect. You know, like if you start this porch, this porch uh, vlog, podcast, whatever you may want to call it, and something happened where you may stop and years down the line, there's 18 more of them. They don't owe you shit, true. Right. But they also don't have to shit on you in the process because Right. You created a lane for us to be doing what we did. Right. Yeah. So. No, nah, that's real. I mean, you you wish people would like would would, would pay more homage or would like show that yeah, respect it more, but it's, but you always we got too many egos it. in the industry. Yeah. Too much pride, too many egos. Yeah. That's the reason why a lot of people love me though. Like even as motherfuckers feel I'm as big as I am, I still introduce myself when I go to people. Yeah. And a lot of people who own right now can tell you I reached out to them before anybody really even yeah. got to paying attention or reached out to them just to take that moment to say, man, I ain't gonna lie, that shit you're doing dope. Yeah. If you need something, you let me know I'm rocking with you. Yeah. And that go a long way. Nah, for sure. Because there's a lot of artists that- I'm like, saying some of, I could say some of my closest is the biggest artists in the world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it didn't start because we just met as they the biggest artists in the world. It started when we was all still trying to come up or I may have been bigger than them at at that point, you know? Right, right, yeah. No, and, I mean, and that I, shit go a long way. I remember, I mean, like, even seeing, like, you working with artists like J. Cole, like, That's you my know, brother. Like early on. Yep. I mean, cats like Young Thug. That's like, my brother. You, you, yeah, yep. for sure. Um, People don't know the history of how much and how long I've been around and how many people I've been right there side by side with. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That's why I say some of the biggest in the world. Yeah, because I think even a lot of people when you um, were signed to Grand Hustle and were even the VP, like mm -hmm. over there, I think a lot of people were shocked at the relationship with you and, you know, with you and Tip, you know, not for any reason, but just, you know what I mean? Just not expecting like for y'all to be as tight as y'all was. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, that nigga act just alike. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we debate, we argue, we laugh, we yeah. just, <laughs> it's just, that's us, man, you know. Yeah. Um, like, that's my brother to where if I ain't heard from him, I'll call and cuss him out, vice versa, you know? Yeah. Just, that's the relationship that we, we got. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, that's what's up. Because even, even with me not being a VP no more, they still, there's no way you still think of them and you don't think of me. Right, you know for sure. Like, that's for sure. You're a part of that foundation, yeah. for real. Yeah. yeah. So we was talking about 2006 on like that source cover and something that was interesting um about that day was that and, and what i've noticed about you through the years so in that picture we show you were doing that yahoo pepsi smash that mic pass like what they were doing you know back then which was like early on like being ahead of the game like in the digital wave because that you know what i mean that was one of the platforms that was you know popping in but a lot of artists wasn't down to you know do you know what i'm saying stuff like that or jump on those types of platforms you were always like kind of ahead of the game with tapping in with myspace being on vine mm -hmm. you know all of that and even with tapping in with the younger artists like what we was talking about so like can you just talk about just being just open-minded and being one man a lot of people don't do stuff like that because they may be insecure, yeah. uncomfortable. But for me, I love the competition. It's friendly competition. I look at that shit, doing music with the young artists, I look at it as spawn, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, embracing different things, like, like why not? Like, I'm one of them, I'm a real big homie where I can sit back, laugh, joke, and, and, and play with some of the other homies with whatever they got going on. So, like, yeah. when you go back to thinking Vine, right? Vine was what everybody see people doing modern day skits and right, right. And, and pranks and other stuff like Vine right. was back then. If you go look at some of the biggest original Vines, I'm on right. a lot of them, you know exactly. what I'm saying? Um, I've always embraced everybody, man. And it's like, I see the good when other people see the fuck ups in people, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I make it work. Right. 
And, and so also back then in 2006, um, you dropped what some may consider to be Yo Doggy Style, Yo Chronic. Restless. Restless album. Mm -hmm. A lot of people comparing Stuck in Motion to Restless right now. Yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. They have no idea the records I got sitting up right now. Oh. Got no idea. <laughs> no fucking idea. Man, can you, can you like talk about that time when you released Restless? I mean, cause you were, I mean, you had been, I mean, that was like the wave of Houston, just so many mixtapes. You was dropping so many mixtapes, you know what I'm saying? Before we get to that, look at this. Can't show the camera, I'm just gonna let you see it. That's just one song, imagine that's coming next. Look at it close, that's all one song. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, that's retarded. You see what I'm saying? Like, I, you have no idea, bro. I've been so far ahead of the curve. Oh, that's retarded. It's... <laughs> and it's funny, too, that you, damn, it's funny that you showed me that because I was, I was going to, grab one of them from, huh? I was going to talk about, too, like, you, you used to drop projects, like, some of your mixtapes would be, like, 30 song, you know what I'm saying, projects, but then you would, you, you had like, I don't want to call them posse cuts, but yeah. you had, you had, you had like. I'm on series. Yeah. Everybody and everybody be waiting, believe it or not. Majority of the artists be, man, you got to let me get on it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So they, they coming. I'm on four, be next. Word. Right. Maybe I'm on five right up, right after, you never know, but yeah. they though. Nah, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. <laughs> So can you talk about just like during that time though, you know what I'm uh, saying, Restless. like when you dropped Restless, yeah. So Restless is a real important album for me because that's the album that got me the national recognition, right? Yeah. Um, but it's also an important album because that's when Hawk passed. Mm, and um, right. I was determined to make him proud, you know, because he was rooting for me and he was pushing me like no other, you know. Mm -hmm. We had the record Swing. Mm -hmm. um, that was with him and Pimp C on it? Yeah, Pimp C was on the remix. Right. Originally, it was me and him. Yeah. Yeah, and that was a complicated record. Um, I told this story last night to uh, DC and them that that's a remix of Michael Jackson, Lady in My Life. Mm -hmm. And I remember we got the approval from Michael Jackson for Swain, but one of the writers on it said no. So the original Swain never came out. Oh, there was wow. always the 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 version that Mike Dean remade. Gotcha. But uh, even part of history, that was dope just to even imagine me getting the okay right. of a Michael Jackson for a record, you right. know what I'm saying? But right. it was just, that album was just big. I was going through it. I was hurt, heart broke behind Hawk. Um, mm -hmm. It was my intro to the world. It was just like, man, I was just trying to figure it out, you know? But I felt like I had something to prove with that album. And yeah. I released it and it became one of the classics. I just give me one of them out that box, please. I'm listening to you. Yeah, nah, nah, definitely, uh, definitely a classic. Swang, you know what I'm saying? Was yeah, was 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 a classic. I mean, just crazy. I mean, that album was like, I mean, I feel like just one of the best albums like that even came out like during that time. Like it, it yeah, was just yeah, a lot yeah. of. That album, man. That album introduced me to the world. Shocked the world too, because you gotta think, man, I had big, crazy features on that. That's when people start realizing, like, okay, he's, right. yeah, yeah, this he's is gonna one be of one of one. Like, yeah. yeah, cause you kinda, cause, you know, because when you came out with that and like how popular that it had gotten, like you really did take a lot of people by surprise. Mm -hmm. And then when they saw like, okay, wait a minute, like he not just like some new Jack out here, like, wait a minute, bro is mm -hmm. affiliated with, you know what I'm saying? Some of everybody who's respected, you know, so. So you actually get to see it beforehand. Oh, word. That, that These unboxing. the new ABN shades, yeah, the high BB ABN. You can see them. But the official um, ABN shades and they limited, you know. Right. Oh, those are clean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, you know. Yeah, that was clean. Yeah, that's a gift for you, homie. Appreciate that. Yes, sir. Appreciate that, my brother. Yeah. 
Hey, and then you dropped some, uh, you dropped some shoes with Sia Collective too. Yeah, yeah, they, I dropped them during trade day. Yeah. They was out that day. Yeah, nah, they, that, that's a dope brand. I, I, I rock with Sia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right, so, so something I wanted to talk about too, man, is, uh, you know, with, with your lyrics, like, you've always, you know, tapped into, like, social commentary, meaning, like, telling us about scenarios, situations, but then also, you know, telling us like the results of some of them situations. So that's how I raised a lot of people. A lot of men, a lot of people of the generation after, even some after them, would yeah. be like, man, you raised me when my own parents didn't raise me. Yeah. I learned from you. You was giving life lessons. Yeah, I learned how to bump my head. I learned what not to not bump my head, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. That's a blessing, you know. Yeah, no, for, for sure. sure. So, like, the talk, the, there's a lot of talk now, a lot of, you know, chatter going on the internet right now, too, where, you know, like, artists are being challenged about, you know, like, the, their lyrics that they're using in their rhymes and, you know what I mean, and, and then, like, needing to be examples for people. And Man, I, I never get into that. I'm not blaming nobody because sometimes that shit start at home. Yeah. You know, you know, you can't, I can't project everything everybody else do on somebody else. Cause shit, we all, we've all watched Terminator. We all watched Rambo, shit. Yeah. Who the fuck don't love a Will Smith movie when he fighting and, and, and killing and doing whatever he gotta do, you know? Right, right. We can't put that on nobody, you know? Yeah. Now, of course, I'm gonna say, man, don't go overboard. Don't come out here with the music like, Fuck everybody sooner you see somebody pick up a gun and just shoot them right now. Right. Yeah, it'd be some goofy ass shit like hell no, I don't tell nobody to do no shit like that. But we can't necessarily censor shit that we already know is that shit that we see. Right. You know, now the good thing is like how I do my music, I gotta tell you what can happen behind you doing that. Right. You make your own decision. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you might tell somebody like shit. I, I I might punch you in your face, or I might I might slap you in your face. But like, <laughs> it yeah. ain't glorifying some yeah, bullshit. Yeah, and I, and I and you know, like me and Tip had a conversation, right? Another reason why we do what we can with the youth is because we did have times of being fucked up where we may have caused a lot of damage, you know? And this is our way for, for writing some of our wrongs to, to be there to guide them or to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. At times too, but that's, right. that's just a double-edged sword, bro, yeah. you know? Because it's just like you, you you post an interview and somebody may say something in the interview that can be to that nature and then they go to blame you, you right. know what I'm saying? So, right. But I think real ones, a lot of us have censored our lyrics enough to where we ain't going overboard. Yeah. And that's not by force. I think that's just naturally when you grow up, you just understand like, yeah, I ain't, I don't want to watch some of these people just crash out and, and yeah. tap out, you know? Yeah, yeah. So like how much, uh, you know, how much responsibility though do you feel like it is on the artist to put like a real message in their music? I can't, but who am I to say that? that like, I feel like, if they want to do it, they're going to do it. Yeah. And if they don't, why should I have to force them? That's like people always, man, Trey, you one of the only artists I see giving back. Why are these other artists? And they be like, bro, why do they have to? If they want to, let them. If they don't, you can't force people to do that, man. Like, like, so saying. it's like, don't, I don't want to sit here and talk about what the next person should be doing. I got to talk about what I'm doing. That's real. Because it wouldn't be right for you to be saying, like calling out names and be like, man, these folks need to be giving back and I don't see yeah. them doing community. Yeah, I got what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, it just, you know. So um, I'm not going to say they, they should. I'm not going to say they shouldn't. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say, man, if they got kids yeah. and they actually fuck with their kids, yeah. Our little bros and little sisters, then it'll touch them at some point where they'll get how to do what, you know? Yeah. It's ways of getting an understanding without having to force it. Right. And, uh, man, did you really, like, 
pop a, 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 a bullet that was stuck in your arm, like yeah, out was, on your it arm. It was on camera. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, that, you can, I ain't got no special effects that show <laughs> or shit like that. I yeah, seen yeah. that, man. I was like, bro, that's crazy as hell. Uh -huh. Yeah, I did, man. Y'all wouldn't have seen it if it. Remember, I was telling you about my, my nephew, Nico. Um, yeah. And my brother, Clip, rest in peace. That's his son. And uh, I didn't even know what viral meant back then, right? Yeah. He like, man. Because I was just telling him I was finna do it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He like, nah, nah, wait, wait, man, let me get my phone. This shit gonna go viral. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck that means. <laughs> but I wasn't paying attention. I'm just doing it and I'm talking to him in the yeah. process. But he's actually talking to him, but he recording. Yeah. And that shit shook up the world. Yeah, that shit <laughs> went crazy. You see what I'm saying? So it's yeah. like, bro, I didn't, that's part of being in tune with some of the youngsters to understand. I had no fucking idea that shit was going. Yeah. Bro, I had white people with licensed companies contacting me <laughs> left and right. Let me pay you this to have the rights of this video. To It was just like crazy, man. Wow. Nah, that's super crazy, man. I mean, how long had it been stuck in your arm? About five years. And was it something where like you would like kind of feel it like almost like on the edge, like mm -hmm. you would almost feel it and be like, damn, I could probably like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To blood start coming out. And I start waking up with blood on my shoulder oh. for about two days. And at that point, I'm like, man, fuck this. Like I kept messing with it till it broke skin. And okay, I was just about to ask you, you have to like cut a little bit, like to. Oh, like, I kept messing with it. it I wouldn't say cut, but I, I broke the skin on it and shit. Yeah. Led to what it was. Word, word. No, I, I still got the bullet. Oh shit, that's crazy. That that that's going shit. They need to put that in the trap museum. Oh, good idea. <laughs> good you idea. know what I'm saying? For real, for real. And uh, you was on Joe Rogan podcast. Shout uh, out Joe. Recent too. Yeah, yeah. Nah, seeing that. Um, nah, that's what's up, man. So I mean, how, how you connect with? Uh, how you connect with him and like even, I mean, cause I know like you, you I got pretty a, you involved know, like in the UFC. I got a whole deal with UFC. You know, Dana White, my brother. Um, yeah. The whole UFC family, my people, you know, Derek the Beast Lewis, you know, that's one of my bros. Mm -hmm. um, Dustin Poirier, my brother. Kevin Holland. Really everybody, you know. Usman, um, John Anik, like everybody over there. And, um, even Rogan and I remember John Anik you know, he's one of the commentators, but mm -hmm. he kept telling me, like, bro, you got to get on the the, the Rogan podcast because mm -hmm. just for the stuff that you do for the people. Yeah. Like, people need to know this. People need to see this so they can support you. And um, he hyped me up about it. And I was um, one of the comedians, David Lucas. He was in um, Post Malone had me come out in Houston and he had Joe and David with him, and me and Joe was already cool anyway, and mm -hmm. I was getting posts, his, uh, him and the homie Dre London, I was getting them some bump boxes, and me and Joe was talking, and he had just had, um, he was just with posts, and he was like, man, we need to go and just make this shit happen, and yeah. we planned from there, and it was perfect timing, because the album was getting ready to come out. I had quite a few things going on, which led to me doing what I did and it introduced me to a whole nother crowd. Yeah, you know? nah, for sure. I mean, I was seeing some of those clips, you know, go around and I was happy that like, I mean, I was happy that <clears throat> that you were able to tap into like a whole nother audience and like yeah. really like get them game on, you know, what you got going on. Now. I'm about to, man, I'm about to fuck the game up too. So I'm part of a team called Proto Holograms, right? They do holograms that you might have seen it go viral one time, they had a big hologram. Mm. But um, I got a video that comes out this Monday called I'm Here off Stuck in Motion. Okay. And the whole video is me as a hologram. Oh, sure. Wow. So I'm feeling really fuck the game up with that one, man. Yeah. I, I've always moved forward ahead of the curve. Yeah. You know? <laughs> no, that's ill. That's ill. And let me ask you this, man, with recording Stuck in Motion, um, with it being like such a different vibe um, of a project, did you have to change any other process, like in what you record, or like you know add mm. any kind of you know any kind of vibe or anything to the studio or whatever? Hell no. Yeah. It's just um, the hard hardest part about this album and just everything I've recorded in past years is I don't write. Okay. So. I'm just going in there and wherever I fall off, I'm picking up. Yeah. And 
it comes out to be dope masterpieces, but when it's time for me to do a video or perform, mm. I don't know the fucking lyrics. Oh, so I'm having to try and learn these shits <laughs> yeah. as much as I can. So it's a beautiful thing when it come out, but it'd be a stressful thing for me because <laughs> when I'm shooting the video, I'm, they literally having to play the song over and over all day so I can learn yeah. most of it so I can get what I need done. Oh, wow. That's funny. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, man. Damn. So, uh, what would you say, uh, Trey, is one of the biggest life lessons you learned? <sighs> man, it's too many to name. <laughs> I think everything about my life is who built me. Mm. Character-wise, man. Um, what I will say is keep God first. Mm. And um, you used to hear people say, trust the process, right? And it sounded good back then. Mm. But I like I went to visit Thug recently and we were just talking. I hate the fucking process. Hmm. The process is probably the hardest fucking thing you have to go through to elevate to the next level yeah. or get to where you got to go. That's real. So one was keep God first and understand that the process is happening for a reason. Nah, for sure. You you definitely got to be patient and. and if you can weather that storm, you're gonna be good to go. Yeah, that's true. But true weathering answer. that storm is. It's gonna take its toll on you. Yeah, that's the true essence of discipline. That, so, right, I remember me and Jay, Jay like my pops, Jay Prince, so we mm -hmm. talked and uh, we was just chopping up and I used to, I was telling him like, man, if somebody say something or do something and I don't react, I feel like a hoe. But it helped me to understand that it's totally opposite of that. When you let people dictate and make you react or make you move based off that emotion at that time, that's a form of weakness. Yeah. And you know, a lot of us that, that come up from how we came up, we think totally the opposite. We feel like, nah, we got something to prove. Right. So now it's like, I do my best to to tap into a, a lot of niggas like myself and, and those that come up that remind me of me to help me understand everything ain't, they don't get the reaction for everything. Yeah. And if you're in a position and you got this going on and ain't got shit going on, you can end up jeopardizing everything you got when all the while they really don't want to do shit. They may be doing it just to get the reaction or just to mm -hmm. throw you off of whatever you got because in their mind is they know they can't have it, but they're going to do whatever they can do to just make sure you don't have it. And they be willing to crash out they self just so you don't have it. Real shit. Like that hate can be strong, Real you know? Shit. Especially, yeah, from somebody who ain't got nothing to lose. Um, and they say hurt people hurt people, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So like, yeah, somebody else who's dealing with something emotionally or something else that they can't, you know, really deal with will try to get that reaction out of you because that, that's the only thing, the only upside that they see for them is watching you react, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, some yeah, bullshit, definitely. So. Yeah, now nah, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Man, Trey, you got any shout outs? You got any, you know what I'm saying, words you um, want to give the fans? Be on the lookout for the rejects which is um, I, I put together a group similar to myself that's, that's dope, wrapped their ass off, respected it through the streets, had their own um, fan base, but haven't really had the, the platform or the opportunity. Um, mm. And it's Big Tony, Jack Boy, Cal Wayne, 30 Ways, Fast Money, um, Ski Taste, Laredo Savage, and Millie Bucks. And I'm doing everything I can to just let them use my platform to the max wow. and put together a dope project for them. And you know, just give them the opportunity. You know, you never know who may grab deals from out it, but at the end of the day, bro, it don't take shit. It costs zero dollars to give people opportunities to keep it real with them, bro. Yeah. So that's the, the goal. Um, they first record, the tension flow is coming. And then after that, you know, that's going to be the kickoff. It's going to be records coming left and right. And I may just release one of their records ASAP. It can, it can be in the next week or so. I just, yeah. I'm brainstorming. I'm trying to juggle doing this and that. And, but it's, it's definitely on the way. I posted them just yesterday. Okay. And um, shout out to everybody in Houston doing their thing. Um, man, just shout out there. Shout out um, Be Good, Beyonce, whole team. Just... I was amazed, man, like, um, Miss Tina, you know, it's like my mama, Ivy, everybody over there, but when B came back and did the, 
Reliance Stadium, man. That was the biggest stadium in Houston. Yeah. Sold that motherfucker out two nights. I think she could have sold it out seven nights in a row. Oh, for real. But when you see how that stadium looked, that shit was, the football games don't even look like that. That yeah. shit was just unbelievable. And everybody had on sale. <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable, bro. Yeah. Um, shit like that motivate me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Sure. You have other people be bitter about shit like that. Like, hell nah, nigga. That's yeah. Like, my, that's my sis. Yeah, Fuck that. That's, I'm, that's I'm like rooting the lineage. for that. That's like, yeah. yeah. And stuff like that, man, like to a real one, it motivates you to let you know that like great things are possible and let yeah. you know that you can achieve, you know what I mean? Get to get to some great things. Yeah, man. Um, shout out, of course, my bro j um doing his thing. And bro, I got, you know, I got a whole bunch of tapes that still ain't came out. You know, me and Thug got an album sitting up. Me and Mozzie got an album sitting up. Mm. Me and Dave East got an album sitting up. Me and Conway got an album sitting up. Me, Payroll, Giovanni, and Burner got an album sitting up. Like, these things that's already complete, just sitting up. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'll be moving so far ahead of the curve, man. Yeah. Just put like this if I was ever stop rapping right now, I could put out music for the rest of eternity. Yeah. I never have to be in the studio again, but I love being in the studio. Um, tip movie, The Apartments is out. Make sure y'all get that. My movie. Drop any day called Soul. Okay. First comedy movie film I've done, so that's gonna be dope. Um, cartoon you, 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 is on the way. You in it as well, or you just? Like, yeah, yeah, it's done. Okay. It, it, it released any day on Tubi. Okay, wow. I'm literally waiting. Um, the cartoon, haven't announced it, but you know I did a partnership with probably one of the biggest comedians on earth. Um, I announced that soon. Uh, that, and then you know. Um, I'll be heavy on pushing Iceman Nick. All my jury come from Iceman Nick. Right. Um, he definitely one of the, the, the dopest to do it, man. Um, I don't know, man. My kids, everybody who down with me, man. I, you know, it is what it is. And shout out to all the homies who who waiting on their turn to be able to come get on the porch and, you know, be motivated by watching shit like that, man. Keep doing you. Don't let nobody tell you to stop. No matter what a motherfucker say or how it may seem, don't fuck up and give up seconds before your blessing come. That's what it is. Trade the truth, man. We signing out. That's what's up, man. P appreciate you blessing the, the porch with the truth. Yeah. Oh, Shout out the porch. Let's get it. Yes, sir. Okay,